Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain you how to execute your cell unit tests in Azure DevOps. So this is actually a tutorial and uh, it contains two uh, parts. In the first part, I will be covering uh, what is the cell name, then uh, what are the main features of Azure DevOps. And I will also explain how to create a sample Maven JNN project in Delhi uh, to execute your cell unit tests. So that things uh, will be covered in part one. In part two, I'm going to cover how to execute your uh, tests on Linux agent in Azure DevOps and execute tests on Chrome Firefox using containers. And uh, then if you want to execute your Safari tests, you will need a Mac agent. And if you want to execute a Microsoft agent Internet Explorer tests, you will need a Microsoft agent. So I will explain you how to configure those agents uh, in Azure DevOps and uh, lots of other things are there, how to configure reports, how to build your uh, Git repository. So all these things will be covered in this particular uh, videos. So in the first part, I'm going to cover these things as I mentioned earlier. So let's get started with that first. So Selenium's official website is this one, selenium.dev. Selenium is a web automation testing framework. And we can automate uh, like functional web tests uh, using Selenium. One of the important or uh, major thing that I like about Selenium is that you can write tests in various uh, languages like Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript, etc. And uh, this diagram shows you how Selenium works. You write tests in uh, any of these languages, Java, C Sharp, Python, etc. And then when you execute the uh, tests, it actually sends the commands to the Selenium server. And then Selenium server will then forward those uh, commands to the actual browser and then that automation will happen. The responses will be sent back to the client. So Selenium server is basically a HTTP server. And that's why those uh, whatever the commands or API you have got in the tests, they are actually mapped to the HTTP requests. For example, if you want to create a new session, when you do new Chrome driver, for example, you are actually sending post request to the HTTP server, that is Selenium server, with this endpoint slash session. So what it is doing is actually creating new session and returning the session ID to the client. Then to get the status of the server, you can use, use this command get slash status. To delete the session, when you actually call the dot quit, it is actually doing this, uh, executing this command or sending this HTTP command to the Selenium server, delete slash session, session ID, and so on and so forth. Now let us see what are the browsers supported by Selenium. So it supports Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari. I haven't mentioned Opera here because it is not uh, widely used. That's why I didn't mention. But Opera is also supported by Selenium. Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge. So all these browsers are supported by Selenium. Major browsers are supported by Selenium. That's about Selenium introduction. Now let's go to the Azure DevOps. Now Azure is actually a cloud service provided by Microsoft. And Azure DevOps is basically a project management service. So with Azure DevOps, you can manage the entire life cycle of your project. For example, you can create dashboards, you can run agile uh, methodologies, then you can create repositories, you can build pipelines, then uh, release the pipelines, deploy your applications, create test plans, test cases, enter your timesheets for the project that you worked on. I'm just going to take you to the uh, Azure DevOps website now so that it will be more clear. So you can see on the left hand side there is overview of the project where you can uh, put the dashboards you can view the project statistics, etc. In the dashboard, you can add different types of widgets uh, related to your project. For example, how many test cases were executed, or how many builds were failed, passed. Then uh, you can also uh, show here the dashboard showing uh, what all test cases uh, were executed manually, what was the pass percentage, fail percentage, etc. So you can just uh, click on add a widget and then you can uh, select any of the widget from there that you need. In the wiki, you can put uh, the if you are aware about the confluence page that is used in a Jira, then similarly here we have got a wiki where you can put the documentation. You can create a project wiki and then now let us go to the boards. So let us see what is there in the boards. In the boards we have got uh, different types of work items that you can create like bug, feature, epic. This is similar to the Jira. This, this uh, interface is like just Jira. In board you can uh, view the board, sprint boards. You can create sprints there. Then very important thing now, this repo from the automation perspective. So repos are basically the Git repositories. And here you can uh, see commits on your repositories or the branches, pushes, whatever uh, developers have pushed changes, you can see those changes there. Branches, how many branches are there for your uh, repository, you can see there. At the top you can see what uh, repository is selected. A project can have multiple repositories. As you can see here, there are five repositories that I have created. Selenium, Maven, JVT repositories there. 
which we are going to uh, use in the next video in which I will show you how to execute your Selenium tests using this repository in Azure DevOps. But uh, apart from that, uh, here you can see new repository, import repository, manage repository. These are the three options are available here. So you can create a new repository right in this Azure DevOps. If you have existing repository, let us say in GitHub, you can import that repository by clicking on this button. And if you want to delete or manage your repository, just click here and then you can manage the repository. And uh, to browse the files in that repository, you have to click on files here. And you can see this, this is how this project looks like. You can see here in the source, this is how it looks like. But it's just one uh, class, app test. And there are different uh, tests that I've created for different browsers. For example, Chrome, then Chrome in mobile, then Internet Explorer, Edge, etc. And in the resources, uh, as I said earlier, we need the drivers uh, to execute tests uh, in Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge. I haven't put the drivers for Chrome or Firefox here because I'm going to execute those tests on container. So only those drivers are required uh, for me to run tests on the Microsoft's uh, browsers because they, these browsers do not have any containers, and Docker containers. And in the pipeline, uh, that these things I'm going to cover in the next video, but I'll just give you the brief uh, description what is this pipeline about. Pipeline basically uh, is used to compile or build your projects. So you can see here I have built this repository. And in the religious, you can actually execute your test or deploy your applications in develop, development context. So I'm going to cover it, that thing in the next video. But uh, now let us move on to how to create the Maven project in IntelliJ. So here is one uh, project that I've created, Selenium Maven J unit. And to basically to create the new project, what you have to do is you have to go to file menu in IntelliJ and you can uh, get this IntelliJ community edition for free. You don't need to uh, pay a single dollar for this. So you can uh, go get this IntelliJ community edition, then go to file and then new project. You can create a Gradle project or Maven project. In this video, I'm going to cover Maven project. But uh, in next uh, upcoming videos, I'll be covering Gradle as well. So here you have to select Maven, then click on create from archetype. And then over there, you have to select this particular uh, architecture type, quick start. Then click on next. And then give the group ID, artifact ID. And just uh, go ahead. It will create the sample directories for you, the source and source directory is automatically created this is the standard structure for any maven project in the world source main and source test in main your main uh, applications files will be residing in test all the tests related uh, files like for example if you have created any tests or functional tests all those tests will go into test directory and in the main all the development related stuff will go in so here in the test i've got a java directory that is again standard directory for maven and this resources directory I have created right under this test where I have stored these drivers for Inter uh, Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge. In here, you can create the package uh, under Java. So this this is automatically created. When you create the project, you have to give the organization ID. Uh, so I had given org.soft first. And this is the syntax that you have to follow. When you create this, uh, this file is automatically created for you. But uh, I have added these tests, as you can see, to launch the Chrome, the mobile Chrome, all these test cases I've added. So I'll quickly show you this test case. But before that, let me show you pom.xml. pom.xml is very important file in Maven project, which tells uh, the, if you go upside, here you can see what is the model version of pom file and uh, what is the group ID, what is the artifact ID version. Group ID is like nothing but like organization level ID. And artifact ID is the ID for this particular project. Any given organization can have or the group can have multiple artifacts or multiple projects you can call it the name of this project url you can give here the url of this project right now it is just example.com and in the properties you can basically give the variables next important section is dependencies where uh, i have added this dependency the chain of dependencies automatically added when you create a new fresh project but uh, this is the crux of this uh, project where uh, i have added the selenium dependency selenium java and this is the version that i'm using and down here you don't need to make any changes in the plugin section on the right hand side you can see all the life cycles for the maven maven follows typical life cycle for example if you want to delete all the bin directory for your project you can click on clean 
if you want to compile your project you can uh, execute this particular uh, goal compile if you want to execute test you can execute this goal so that's that goals are there you can also click here and then execute those goals so what we are doing here is we are executing this test launch firefox test from this test class app test and this is the goal test goal this dash x is basically used to log all the output or all type of logs information uh, in the maven logs dash x normally it is not required but if something is failing then it is useful for troubleshooting so that's how you can create project once the project is created you can push it uh, to the or uh, you can push it to github and then from github you can import into uh, this microsoft azure so i will uh, again show you how you can do that so you can see here new repository is there you can create new repository and then clone the repository locally once the repository is cloned locally you can uh, create this project that i was just showing and then uh, save that particular repository in the clone location and once it is in the clone location you can easily push and pull the changes so that's all in this uh, video i'm sure this is very uh, lengthy video but i hope uh, it was useful for you if you have any questions on these concepts that I explain in this video, you can uh, let me know through the comments. In the next video, I'm going to cover how you can execute these tests in uh, browsers in Azure DevOps. So we'll be using container as well as uh, the uh, binaries as well, uh, the binaries that are actually available on the Windows machine.